Welcome to Vintage Weights PGH, and this is not my gym. I'm in another man's basement. This is Kevin. Howdy, folks. I came all the way out here to sunny Cleveland. That's right. It's much flatter than Pittsburgh. That's first impression, at least. <laughs> to pick up this York Crusher that Kevin was kind enough to grab for me. It went for sale not too far from here, and I really wanted one. I'll have a future video all about this device. Not too bad, but to be fair, it's only got three of the five springs. So thanks for picking this up, man. Yeah, no problem. It's really easy. Difficulty with uh, grabbing or anything? No, Sale it was, was great. Fine. Yeah, I actually picked up a few more things from yes. the guy while I was there. Yeah. Awesome. It's a cool old piece. You mess around with it at all? Oh, of course I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's completely fine. Uh -huh. I mean, you're not going to damage it. It's yeah. fairly well made. I've seen uh -huh. them cracked before, but this one looks good. So since I drove out here, uh -huh. I asked uh, Kevin, hey, can I take a tour of your gym? And he was kind enough to oblige. So let's take a look around. So, yep. so we'll start we right here, here, the centerpiece of the gym. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Massonomics yes. drink spotter light. <laughs> Absolutely. I move mine around uh -huh. quite a bit, uh, yeah, especially I, podcasting and things. I'll yeah, it'll follow me around. around to the lat pull down over to the dumbbells. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, I always have a spare just there in case. Go. I see behind you here, you have... Yep. Pretty nice uh, logo. I, I like it a lot. Yeah. Is it a like a Celtic kind of theme going on? Yep. My my family's got some Irish ancestry, um, so I was trying to incorporate that into the gym. <laughs> um, I think the the Ray Hill Strong thing just kind of came yeah. from something my family always talked about. So I started looking up you know Irish symbols of strength, and this particular knot came up. So I threw some chains around it, threw a little family saying, and the. Uh, uh, the day the, the, or the, the year it was established on there. Of course, I'm going to notice when I come in. Yep. And I've noticed online, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, I, I see you lifting you know all what the you're time. Getting into. I know what I was getting into, that you've got the milled era Yorks. So I see the color orange, I see milled era Yorks, and no offense, but I kind of <laughs> think of the no wine cellar. Of course. <laughs> have, have you, um, you know, had a little banter with Big Keith about uh -huh. some of the similarities at all? Yeah, yeah. I've always said that I'm, you know... <laughs> This gym's kind of a Keith Light, Diet Keith. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Kevin and Keith, the Orange, the Yorks, powerlifting in the basement, it all kind of goes together. We're both Browns fans. Sure. It just uh, kind of all comes together here. You've got a rep bench here. Yep. And then Titan Rack. Titan I'm Rack. Thinking. Yeah, I've got a mishmash of everything yeah. in here. <laughs> and then the Titan Rack, this is... This is, is the this two T3, two by three. Okay, yep. two by three. Yep. Has that... Uh, the thing that people get on me about with a uh, Rogue Monster Light is that, oh, it's Monster Light, it's not one inch holes, and it's mm -hmm. not, uh, you know, you're going to be held back by anything. Have you ever, you know, been held back having the, the two by three? Not even the a three by three or nah. anything? No. Nope. Been if anything, able... I like the two by three because uh -huh. the, uh, the rack's actually a little bit skinnier. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. when I'm, you know, unracking a squat, yeah. I'm less likely to bang the plates against the rack. There you go. Nice. And then something I like about your Instagram account that I've seen you do various things over the years mm -hmm. would be some of your DIY kind of uh, yeah. projects. So back yeah. here, let me move the camera. Let's take a look at what sure. we got going on here. So I see you moving some stuff around and behind you here, it's made out of wood. You've got some upholstery and padding on it. Yep. This comes down. And you've got yourself a reverse hyper. That is cool. Then I got a spudding belt squat belt that hooks up down here. And it just swings. It actually is on actual bearings down below. Yeah. So it, it swings pretty good. I had a... Uh, Rogue West Side Scout for a while, uh -huh. and although it would fold up, it was not nearly as convenient as this. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that still out of the way. I, I've still even squatted out of the back here, and then you can superset with your with your reverse hypers. Yeah, and I mean, even just seeing you set this up, all you really had to do was move a couple things on your rack, yep. and then drop the safeties, drop some pins in. Yeah, put the pins in and you're ready to go. Yeah. Everything's set up. I'm a little jealous. Uh -huh. this, is, <laughs> this is a cool setup for sure. I've seen do-it-yourself uh, reverse hypers before, uh -huh. but this like in the rack, you just leave it there on your 
yep. uh, uprights. It doesn't block anything. Still walk through the back when you're not using it. That's a very cool design. And the, uh, the upholstery was the biggest upgrade we ever did. I just had the wood for a little while. Mm -hmm. Just got some, uh, some foam padding from, from the you know, craft store and some fake leather and stapled it on. Yeah, I've done some upholstery work myself, mm -hmm. nothing, <laughs> nothing yeah. too fancy, and it is humbling sometimes, yeah. uh, trying to get things smooth. Looks like you did a nice job on this, and the way you have it kind of curved around and angled uh -huh. around, looks like it's comfortable. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, that's a cool piece. So, how long ago did you build this? Uh, I think this was about two years ago. Um, okay. For a while, I was using it once a week, not so much right now. But, you know, I'll get into, you know, a two-month stretch every once yeah. in a while. It's like yeah, yeah. doing it every, t every day, every workout. And now, it's on the floor yeah. here, yep. that's basically what I have in my gym. Um, some of the stuff you have here, yeah, these, little, the here. these little blocks that you uh -huh. have, yours are fancier than mine. <laughs> I just <laughs> Which is ripped some 2x12s cool. and made them stackable. Yeah, mine are stackable because they're rectangular, yeah. but not like this where you have them uh -huh. fitting into each other. That's yeah. pretty cool. So this was kind of the only extent of my do-it-yourself projects, but let's take a look to the left of your rack here, sure. and you've got some cool stuff over there too. Trust me, this is a lot cleaner than my gym. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the York. I, <laughs> I yep. can't help but notice as soon as I come over. The milled Yorks. How'd you go down that path instead of just some regular old cap? The or milled Yorks. Gear? Um, I, I did start with you know the you know barbell standard 45s uh, because they were cheap and they were available. And I lived with them for you know, probably a year or two. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew I wanted more plates. And I did realize that you know, weight isn't just weight. Yeah. That, you know, yeah. One of my 45s, it weighed 50 pounds. I believe it. It was always yeah. the last one I put on yeah. if I ever had to use it. <laughs> and like... I had to balance it out and throw an extra five on the other side. Exactly. Um, so that's when I realized that like, you know, like, I want to get something a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. I don't really you know, feel the need to spend on new stuff. So I started looking into it and I saw yeah. like, I like some of these old plates if, you know, not just old, but like old reputable plates like York's yeah. were, uh, you know, they're available, they're relatively cheap, mm -hmm. but they're machined, accurate, and, yeah. um, and they, they just look cool. And then, not to be outdone, you've got a little uh -huh. Strength Co. 1.25s. Yep. October. These ones I actually won in their Christmas concert a few years or Nice. Contest. Not, <laughs> contest. Not a, not a concert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, now I want them to have yeah. a Christmas concert. Make it happen, Grant. Nice. Yeah, the, uh, it was, they had a, a big Christmas tree stack of weight plates, and it was, I uh, guess, the, how much weight was in the picture. And me being the engineer that I yeah. am, I counted the weight <laughs> plates. I added them up. I figured out what I probably couldn't see behind there. Yeah. And I think I got it within like, within like 10 pounds. That's so. cool. That's, I mean, it's just like when you were a kid in school and you yep. had to like guess the number of guess the jelly beans or something, jelly yep. beans, yep. that kind of thing. You got all your Yorks. Uh, I see most are pre-USA, but yep. you've got a couple of these uh, later ones here, mm -hmm. you know, with the York font that kind of gives it away, being a little later. And then this is really what I was looking at would be these farmer carry handles. Right, yeah. This is another fun DIY that I did. Um, I like to dabble in some strongman stuff. You know, yeah. I also got you know the sandbag over here and um, doing the and, and the axle press and stuff yeah. that I'll take outside. But these are a fun little thing. You know, it's just some uh, four by six and four by fours. Threw it all together with some pipe, and it's, it's a relatively easy project. I've seen and I've had a couple do-it-yourself farmers carry handles that have come along with pickups, uh -huh. and th none of them have been upright like this. So I think it's really cool you designed these two. Yeah, be... that was one thing I really wanted was the yeah. upright yeah. loading. Because it's just a pain. Yeah. I mean, having like the torpedo style, like, you know, uh -huh. bar that you're essentially just putting the plates on. And when you put them down, yeah. you fold your plates over in half when, yeah. when you're running. And... I don't want to exhaust myself before I exhaust myself, right. you know? Like, <laughs> so why'd you start lifting in the first place? Uh, I lifted, I played high school and college football. Yeah. Um, and I, even though I was just a kicker, um, I still, you know, the, the lifting times were, that's when I was a full member of the team. Mm -hmm. You know, so during practice when we're actually playing football, I didn't do so much with everybody. Yeah. But off-season stuff from lifting, you know, I'm right there in the mix with everyone else. Um, and that's what really, you know, got my, uh, my love for weightlifting and strength training. And, you know, it fell off a little bit after college like a lot of people do. Um, sure. 
I went to a Planet Fitness for <laughs> less than a year. Didn't have any barbells, couldn't stand it. Um, went to some other uh, small commercial gym. And eventually I started training at Old School Iron here in Cleveland. Okay. Uh, it's a huge gym. It sounds cool. If anyone's in the area, I'd highly recommend it. It's a gigantic warehouse. That's actually where my orange theme originated from. All their stuff is orange too. You got used to it, yeah. Um, so that's where I fell in love with powerlifting. Okay. And I'm like, ah, oh, like I love going to this gym. It's just a little inconvenient for me to get to. So yeah. I started the home gym thing. And I think really having the home gym is what pushed me more into the strength training stuff because at the commercial gym, you know, I could go do, I could just, you know, kind of pick out anything to do and it's fun and, you know, other guys were lifting heavy, so I was just kind of copying them. But as soon as I had to start picking out my own equipment, I'm like, oh, like, what do I, I really need yeah. to, you know, keep making progress? Like, what am I actually going to use? And, you know, I learned so much more about it, you know, diving down the rabbit holes of strength training and gym <laughs> equipment and... You know, and then somehow I found my way to Massonomics and... <laughs> and then everything just yeah. uh, takes off from there. Mm -hmm. Then as we come over here, you've got another do-it-yourself project, a barbell uh -huh. rack. Here's the axle you're just talking yep. about. I have a very similar one, but mine is not like this. So where did this come from? So this came from a guy okay. that <laughs> I bought some used dumb these used dumbbells off nice. of. Nice. Um, and he said, he's like, hey, you looking for anything else? Yeah. Uh, I make axles for people. And I'm like... <laughs> That's okay. Awesome. Yeah. So he did a nice job. Yeah. It's it's just some one and a half inch pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he put some nice collars on it, and then I added the where the normal marks would be, so I can yeah. get it lined up. It's uh, a fun change of pace. My axle is from Titan, and I don't like it. It's, uh -huh. The powder coat is way too thin, and that's the two things I noticed about this right away is that the uh -huh. powder coat seems a little thicker, which is nice, and then the collars, like you said. Yeah whatever collars he put on here are a little more substantial than right. ones on my right. Titan axle. Got a multi-grip up here. Uh, that's the Bells of Steel Arch Nemesis. Nice, nice. Like so, using that one too. I might have to take that off and take a look at it. There's a used one near me for okay. sale that I've been considering. So yeah, maybe I'll try it out while I'm here. Yeah, I think the only downside to it is that it's only 25 pounds. Uh -huh. But what I like to do is throw my 10 pound bumpers on the inside. Okay, there Then you go. it's 45 pounds and the plate math is easy. Yeah, yeah. And then it looks like I'm lifting one extra plate that I'm actually lifting. And I noticed you have some Ray Hill Strong, you know, yep, branding through, on the end through here. My bump, through my stickers on the side of there too, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. They're getting a little beat up, but that's yeah. a nice thing about stickers. You can, yep. you know, replace, replenish. Uh, underneath the axle here, yep. what do you have? This is just a rogue grab bag bar back during COVID when they were okay parsing those out. I think this is actually like an echo shaft mm. and but the end caps on it said Bella bar and it, you know it's a mismatch of everything but and grab bags a complete mystery right? Yeah. So yeah, you pulled I, this out and it was a blue barbell. Blue, blue Cerakote so it's, it was great yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So this is kind of like you know my you know Olympic lifting bar you gotcha. know I do you know front squats or cleans with it every once in a while. Yeah. Um, not having the center neural is underrated yeah. for front squats. Right. Agreed. I, I mean, it, it's not that it like tears up my neck uh -huh. that much, but what it will do, and as a man with a beard, yep. Yep. It'll, it'll stick. <laughs> oh, it'll stick. It'll yeah. pull my beard out for yep. sure. So then underneath this, what do we have? This might be my favorite bar. Uh, okay. I used to have an Ohio power bar mm -hmm. and then uh, a couple years ago, I think it was, it was 2022. Okay. Uh, home gym discord was having their, uh, uh, their ice cream classic, I think, was the name of the, the online meet that, yeah. that they did. Sure. And the grand prize was an American Barbell Chewy Bar. That's awesome. And, um, and I happened to win. It was awesome. Um, so this is all stainless steel. This is actually before the Chewy actually came out. Um, cool. So I think the Knurling isn't their final product or what's on their current production bar. I can speak to that because I'm not kidding. Less than 24 hours ago, I bought a Chewy Bar. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it was used. Yeah. So, shout out to Schmalvaro on Discord. Uh -huh. He put up his uh, original run Chewy Bar for sale, and he lives like five minutes from me. And yeah. I just went down to his place yesterday and picked it up. Yeah, it's, it's so, a great bar. It, uh, in the process of that, some guys on Discord, Brick, Ubel, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, gave me the backstory. So it's yeah. 25 TPI uh -huh. teeth per inch on the original run. The current production run is 20. Mm -hmm. So there's less teeth per inch. Yes. Is what I understand it to yeah. be. And yeah. then end caps and little things like that. Mm -hmm. are yeah, I think that the end caps on these still say like the elite bar. I think that yeah. was their previous iteration of a power bar. 
But it, it's still awesome. You still won love the using contest. It. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. When I first joined Discord, I signed up for the Ice Cream Classic, didn't know what it was, and just got pinged for it constantly until mm -hmm. finally I hadn't done anything. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> that was my experience with the Ice Cream Classic. I yeah. didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I was just this annoying new member that uh -huh. was pressing buttons. Yeah. So eh, I've, I've come a long way. Now <laughs> I just pretty much sit in the Vintage Weights channel on Discord. Uh huh. Yeah. So. That is a really, that's like your go-to? Yeah, this is, you know, it's my daily driver, you yeah. know, squat bench. Don't so deadlift with it so much because I've got my own deadlift bar here, but I do occasionally, especially when I'm doing some higher rep stuff yeah. or just, you know, off-season stuff from away from powerlifting meets. Sure. I will like to deadlift with it just so I don't like, you know, get too dependent on a 27 millimeter whippy deadlift bar. True. Your deadlift bar, yeah. is that a Texas deadlift bar? It, it looks like it looks one. Like it's it. the, the ISF. Oh, okay. Um, Interesting. They, they were having a sale a couple of years ago, yeah. and I couldn't afford not to get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've used Texas deadlift bars. I, I, I'd love to add one to the gym yeah. someday, but this is what I got right now, and it's, nice. it's got really sharp knurling, mm -hmm. and it's solid. It's a great deadlift bar. It's, yeah, it's the thick uh, collar uh -huh. that made me think Texas deadlift yep. bar right away. And then... Safety this is squat. a Titan SSB. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, I think, my first specialty bar purchase. Okay. Um, I, I love using it. It's yeah. almost a weekly um, accessory for me, uh, especially in the off season. You know, cranking back the shoulders all the time on a low bar squat's not great. So, SSB is a great change up, and I always credit it to what brought me over a four hundred pound squat. You know, I was nice. Put me up like forty pounds in a year. Going, yeah. Really. My first powerlifting meet to my second. Yeah. Wow. That, that is some progress uh -huh. right there. Do you think it was just, you know, the difference in the weight displacement and the angle of how you were squatting? I, I think or? it was, uh, part of it was just, one, it was still getting some newbie gains. Um, but then also, like, it allowed me to squat more frequently. Okay. Um, so I was squatting, I went from squatting once a week to twice a week because it made it easier to squat twice a week. And yeah. then it was exciting to squat use a, <laughs> using a new piece of equipment. And Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I like having, people often ask me, like, mm -hmm. why do you have so many barbells? Right. Why do you have so many weight plates? I switch it out from week to week in terms of what I use, and mm -hmm. it just keeps, keeps things me, fun. Yeah, motivated. Yeah. I mean, on Sunday, I regularly kind of, like, switch out what I'm going to use that week, uh -huh. and then I'm excited Monday to hit the gym. Yeah, variety is the spice mm -hmm. of life. So now the, as I look down the rack, the oldest looking bar yes. is this bar at the bottom. Yeah. So what in the world is so this? This one's really Any cool. Ideas? This is the one that I asked you about before. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is the first barbell I ever got. Okay. Um, I still, I didn't know anything about it. I, I knew it was a barbell. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was 40 bucks. And even if I could make, you know, even during COVID, like, oh, I could have sold this for 200 bucks. Never going to sell this bar. Nice. Um, it's super sharp knurling. It's definitely a power bar. It's, um, but it's kind of in the style of a Texas power bar. It's 28 yeah. and a half millimeters. Interesting. Um, the end caps don't say anything on them. They, they got kind of a weird look to it. And the neural marks are in the wrong wrong spots. <laughs> so like I, I added in with some Sharpie paint where the neural sure. marks are supposed to be. But like the machining on it's really nice. Everything about it is really high quality except yeah. for the neural marks are in the wrong spot. But it's... It's a solid bar. I remember you sent me pictures, and yeah, I really have no idea who made yeah. this bar. But what I do know is that there were regional companies, um, and still are for the most part. But you know, shipping wasn't what it is today, mm -hmm. so there were much more regionally based sales, and those regional companies would make barbells. And like you said, it has some characteristics of a Texas power mm -hmm. bar. So sometime I would guess in the '80s or so, mm -hmm. a company and you're here in Cleveland and mm -hmm. there were so many Ohio companies. Yeah. So a company probably made their version of it and did a nice job making it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very cool. I very often say that I don't know everything, but the reason I do this YouTube channel and my podcast and things is to learn things. Mm -hmm. So viewers, if you have any idea who made this barbell, please drop a comment. Yeah. Let us know because I'm baffled and so is Kevin and I'm sure he'd love to know. So yeah. Let's take a look what you have over in the dumbbell rack here. You said that you picked up a lot of these dumbbells from the same Same person, guy I got this correct? axle from, yep. I think I got uh, five through 50 all from him, and then I pieced together everything else after the fact. Um, and pretty standard hex dumbbells, yeah. except for one pair, and that's the one that yeah. catches my eye. So, so these are 70s. 
What is up with your 70s? Look at this. I have no idea. Okay. They, they look like someone made them in a shop class. Yeah. And I would say that is exactly what I think of them. I'm going to set it down. It's 70 yeah. pounds. <laughs> is that, uh, especially since it's that about three inch cut uh, of steel on either end, I would bet it's a homemade mm -hmm. project. And it's kind of cool to have those yeah. in your gym, especially since you have a flair for like DIY and mm -hmm. making stuff for your gym. Whoever made them did a nice job. Yeah. They don't rattle. Uh, the heads are on tight, welded. The handles are a nice stainless steel. Not stainless steel. Scratch that. The handles are a nice <laughs> steel handle that's picked up a patina. Same with the heads. So I think they're pretty nice. Yeah, I like them. I've seen far less nicer homemade weights. Right. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. Uh, your dumbbell rack, and as I mentioned, your barbell holder, all fashioned by, uh, you know, on your own. Mm-hmm. So anything that you did with this that, in terms of your dumbbell rack, that you really liked or that you would change? Uh, the one thing I would change would be changing the spacing of these vertical posts mm. supporting this top rack because these dumbbell heads fit real tight in here now. But they still yeah. fit and yeah. it, they're, they're, it's safe. You know, it's definitely well supported. Yeah. Um, it's just a little bit, you know, tricky getting them just right back in the, the perfect spot. If I don't end up getting enough money to buy a dumbbell rack that has trays, this is the next DIY project for my home gym because putting old globe dumbbells that I have at home onto uh, rails mm -hmm. is just like a nightmare. You're going to take your finger off yes. one of those. It's a nightmare. So that's I need something uh, substantially larger for storage, and I really like the way this is layered too. You didn't put them one on top of each other. Right. And it makes sense to me because, you know, the lighter weight ones, you can mm -hmm. just kind of lean and grab what yep, you need. Exactly. The heavier ones are right there in front of you. You don't have to try to, like, wiggle and weasel that mm -hmm. sucker out from beneath. So that's cool. And I made it to fit exactly what I have. Yeah. Um, it, so it fits the space. It fits the dumbbells perfectly. And if you notice, too, after 30 pounds, dumbbells only go up every 10 pounds. Yeah. So I saved, you know... Hundreds of dollars, you not did. having the dumbbells every every five, but yeah. I got some magnetic weight plates from sure. Platemates. Stick those on, and I got my five pound increments all yeah. the way up to 105 pounds. Absolutely, I've seen people with the micro gains dumbbell clips do the same yep. thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that makes sense saving space, but I can't help it. I got to have them all when I'm collecting. Right. So I, well, I, I got to yeah, track down every yeah. every one. And then you have some medals from your competitions up here. Yep. I see Massonomics. Uh -huh. uh, I love that they labeled it astronaut. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you're not an astronaut, but you do work with NASA, which yes. is mm -hmm. very cool and explains some of the yep. uh, you know, decoration around your gym. Yep, some, some posters that we liberated from, yeah. from the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're heading out to sunny South Dakota. Yep, very... about four or five weeks from, from now. Almost time. You pointed out the barbell that you love. Yes. And that's like you know, something you never let go of. Anything else in the gym here that is something that you've had pretty much since the start or mm -hmm. for a long time now that you really think will stay with you as you own a home gym? Um, definitely the plates. Um, I, I'm, you know, I've always, I've said this to my wife before, I'm going to pass down these plates <laughs> and that bar to my son someday. So like he, he, he's going to get those and, um, and hopefully he gets, pass them on to his son and yeah, it's like, yeah. um, you know, it's something that Tanner said from Astronomics. Tanner, uh -huh. he said, you know, they're not, they're not my plates. It's just my turn with them. There you go. So, and I think that really resonates with the vintage world too. You Absolutely. Know, like, yeah. you, know, you, you always hear the stories about where people who had the plates before, um, you know, where, you know, like the, this lat pull down that I got, the guy said like, oh yeah, me and my brother, we bought this 20 years ago and we started lifting with it, you know, and now, you know, I can't lift anymore. So I'm glad to see someone else young taking over it. I love and, that. So. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love getting those. The personal history behind the weights to me is as cool as some of the company history right. and things like that. Right. It adds just a little bit to it, and I am reminded of it when I, mm -hmm. you know, when I use certain weights that like I heard a story like that. Yeah. And you might think of it sometimes when you get on that, you know, mm -hmm. cable pulley and think, oh yeah, that dude was, you know, lifting yeah. with this for twenty years. Yeah. That yep. So then you've got something that. I don't have in my gym, which is space to have 
all kinds of stuff like this. This is amazing. I love the size of your gym. Mm -hmm. We are nice and cool right now because unlike those pesky garage gyms, this is a luxurious basement gym and it has the size to match. Although I sacrificed about two thirds of my basement to my children to have a playroom. That's mm -hmm. why my basement gym is not <laughs> as spacious. But you have enough space for a treadmill here. You've got, let's see, a Concept 2 rower. And then you've got a nice old bench with leg, leg extension, leg, leg curl. Extension, yep. leg curl. You made yourself a little plate rack over there yep. for some standard plates. You got York, Healthways of Hollywood. That's speaking my language. Yep, I knew you'd yeah. like these. Yeah, absolutely. I noticed them within a minute of being in here. Yeah. You've got a horrible brown sign, but you know, <laughs> we just won't pay attention to that. That's okay. I'm just kidding. Keith bets me on the Browns and the Steelers every year. Yep. You're welcome to get in on it if you would like. I think this might be yeah. a good year for me to bet for them. I think this would be a tremendous <laughs> year for you, not for me. Yeah. And then you have something I've been considering, which I think is really cool. You've got some lockers over yeah. here. Well, I think I got one more thing to show you over yeah, here. Yeah, please do. So I know you're from Pittsburgh, so I wanted you to feel comfortable here. So I got you your own basement oh. Pittsburgh toilet. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I noticed the brown sign, but I didn't uh -huh. even notice a Pittsburgh toilet. All jokes aside, I mean, there are actual Pittsburgh toilets much like this. <laughs> Not in my house. And then you've got your lockers over here. I think it's really cool to have some lockers, especially since... I have multiple children that come in and out of my gym. It'd be mm -hmm. nice if I had somewhere to put their stuff. Yeah, I picked up these lockers. I think these were actually you know, school lockers somewhere yeah. local. Uh, I actually still have some, the, like these number stickers. <laughs> we're just, whoever was number six and 12, they were next to each other. That's awesome. I put my old, my old locker labels from when I played football and now it holds all my stickers and, and all my gym crap in here. Very cool. Yeah. I desperately need something like that because a lot of my stuff wall control has helped me but a lot mm -hmm. of my stuff is still laying around in corners and on the floor so and then you know in case you're doing some really intense programming you've got a desk down here yep that's nice how long though have you had the home gym uh it started in 2018 okay so, so i was a, i was a pre-covid yeah, early yeah. adopter of the you. home gym <laughs> snuck right in there right <laughs> nice so you made that transition yep from uh it has a great name old old school iron old school iron yeah Man, great name yeah so you made the transition from mm -hmm. old school iron yeah. to a home gym about yep. six years ago uh-huh nice and no plans to leave the home gym nope you, i'm you're gonna be in a home gym for lifer yeah <laughs> nice you've also got the playpen yep this is where my boy comes and hangs out while we're working working out down here and then another shout out to big keith you told me that he inspired this, a little picture along the air duct. That's a cool way to remember some of the meetups and some of the things you've done. And then your banners and things, your banners and things yeah. are personalized and very cool. Mm -hmm. You've got this one over here. So just a, a big fan of heavy metal. Yeah, I like the heavy metal. And so like I, you know, I like dabbling in the Photoshop and, you know, graphic design stuff so I you know customized a few iconic album covers to be a little bit yeah. more powerlifting themed and over here this one so this one was a gift from your wife this is a gift from my wife uh, I had like an old ratty shower curtain here and she said hey for your birthday I want you to have something nice for the gym to separate you know yeah. the laundry and the workspace yeah. from the rest of the gym so put my big logo up on here and I basically put up all the, you know, the organizations that I like to support and different brands and companies that, you know, have been helped me along my way in the, the home gym and fitness world. But I love some of the customized, you know, Ray Hill Strong Gym, uh -huh. yep. uh, Ray Hill <laughs> Strong <laughs> customized stuff with NASA uh -huh. in Ohio. That's yeah. really cool. Very nice. And then I noticed right away when I came down here, the chalkboard, this is another addition, another present from your wife. This reminds me. Ohio, West Side Barbell, mm -hmm. they had a famous you know, chalkboard where yep. you're putting up your totals and things and you've got a whole wall that was painted with this kind of like chalkboard paint and yep. now you've got all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so there. I like putting my doodles up here yeah. and then of course we've got the record board. So I have you know, um, different weight categories to track anyone who comes into the gym and uh, if, you know, if they put up a, a good number and, and they can get up on the board. 
That's then I also awesome. have my uh, same thing, but for my uh, my grip implements. Rob, I know you're a big grip guy yourself, so that's where I'm going next. Got a few things on here. <laughs> grip has become kind of my strength pursuit personally. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm still doing just general kind of fitness and workouts just for health and so that I can be a grandfather someday. Uh -huh. But in terms of something I'm going to compete in, uh, that's I found my avenue. Yeah. So I noticed over here, yeah, you've got a couple different things. So you've got, you know, a do-it-yourself pinch block. Mm -hmm. I assume you made. Yep. Got a five-dollar bill for some reason. What's that? That is for. Uh, so I got these uh, these heavy grippers. Okay. Um, starting with the light one. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked my way up to the, the set of three. You know, the the yeah. intro set. Mm -hmm. Closing them all pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So I got the next heaviest one. So the five dollar bill is for the first person who in the gym who can close that that heaviest gripper. This one here. Yep. All right, I'm going yeah, for it. Take a whack. I mean, I'm I'm getting a little warmed up. I, uh -huh. I had a feeling you were going to say that, so I'm like, oh, I should start kind of getting warmed yeah. up a little bit here. And uh, you have a sweet chalk bowl over there. I might uh -huh. realize, but yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. Might as well. I have a couple heavy grips. All right, let me get some chalk. Yeah. This is another DIY invention, of course. Nice. Um, it's a uh, you know a yard tamper, tamp down dirt. Um, actually got it for a real project in my backyard and said like I knew I was going to do this so chopped off the top <laughs> little rounded part of the handle and very cool screwed on a little stainless steel bowl well I am not that strong on grippers it's something that's actually a summer goal for my uh -huh. for myself to get more consistent I've been trying to hit them at least twice a week if not three times a week uh, but I follow some people that are like gripper enthusiasts, mm -hmm. like this is what they do. Yeah. So like W and uh, Stranger Grip is another one. I learn a lot by watching these guys. And one thing I learned is that, yeah, when you close the gripper, you gotta like basically show what it is. Mm -hmm. So we've got the heavy grip 250 here. And then uh, you gotta be able to show the handles touching. Yes. So when you're filming, you wanna kinda, mm -hmm. after you get your set hand, you wanna yep. get it out of the way. So I'll try to do this as officially as I can. Let's see if I get $5 or not. There we go. All right. Nice. All right. Now I'm not going to take the $5. I'm going to leave that <laughs> for the next person. But please, okay. someone else who comes out here, if you shut this uh, gripper, the 250, just know that I passed on it. <laughs> no. I'd be a horrible guest if I walked away with the money. <laughs> but that's a cool challenge. I like yeah. having a challenge in the gym. Uh -huh. Let's take a look at what else you got here. So loading pin to hook yep. up some of this stuff. And then you've got a heavy rolling handle here. Yep, that's the uh, the Titan version. Okay. I want to say it's two and a half inch mm -hmm. diameter grip. And yeah. so not quite the Rolling Thunder. I think the Rolling Thunder is actually a little bit smaller, but I think the Rolling th Thunder spins faster. The Rolling Thunder is also plastic. Okay. So the Rolling Thunder is plastic. This, I think, is closer to a Fat Bastard Barbell Club Crusher, <coughs> it's called, okay. which is one of my favorite implements. Mm -hmm. The biggest difference is it has this coating on it. Uh -huh. So sometimes people in grip like having a coating to make it slicker because yeah. then it's more of a challenge. Yep. Other times people are like, no, let that like basically rust and right. patina and they take it off. And I've heard of people taking this Titan grip and huh. taking off. It's really just a yeah. personal preference. But yeah, the sucker's heavy, at least like 11, 12 pounds. Some do-it-yourself you know, softball grips. Yep. Yep. Nice, nice. And then arm blaster, bells of steel. Uh-huh. Got some mag grip style grips here. Right. Was this from Walmart? Because that's where um, I got mine. <laughs> I, it was one of those generic brands. It might yeah. have been Walmart, it might have been someone on Amazon. Yeah. And yeah, I it was like a sale I couldn't pass up. Yeah. It was like a Walmart <clears throat> special, like hundred mm -hmm. bucks you got all of these. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm doing yep. it. And then what's on the other side here? You've got a, a pulley system, I guess I should yeah. ask you about. And you also did a little do-it-yourself project here that mm -hmm. is this Basically like a rhino? Like what am I looking at? Uh, basically, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a belt squat. So you've got like a fairly standard, you know, cable pulley. Yep. But then you've got two by four platform here that you've got uh, a pulley on to set up a belt squat station for yourself. So where did that come from? How did you come to this? So, I, you know, a couple years ago when belt squats were all the rage, yeah. um, I really wanted to add one in. And so I, you know, started coming up with my own design for it. And I think the... Uh, the biggest key to my design was putting this little uh, J hook on here so I can start the weight uh, from okay. a standing position. Then I have my cable lengthener.
All right, so now I can start from a basically a standing position in the squat, lift that up, move that out of the way, and do full depth squats with it. That is slick. That is very cool. Put it back when you're done and step out. And I think my only critique would just be how loud that threading is. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're going to wake up your son. But other than that, I, much like your reverse hyper, the thing that I see in common with some of your projects is how conveniently stored they are and how mm -hmm. conveniently set up they are. That in your home gym, you're not tripping over them. It's just something that if you're programming that, you can easily use it. It's just there in the background. You know, so this, this just lives here and mm -hmm. the cable just goes through whenever I need it. I like it. Very cool. So you've got your first iteration of the Ray Hill Strong emblem on your deadlift platform. Right. Where'd you get the idea of how to do that? It's a nice uh, artistic effort for a first time out. Yeah, so it uh, got the idea from Alan Thrall, Untamed Strength. It's got the, uh, um, he's got his own deadlift platform logos. Yeah. And all we did was lay down some painter's tape, some computer paper with the actual logo on top of it. And you just take a razor and trace through the uh, the logo on the paper, cut out the uh, the painter state below, peel it away, and you have a perfect stencil. That is very cool. And for a first project, I think yeah. it came out well. You're still using it. That's yeah. the proof of concept, right? Yeah. There. Originally, I had a smaller <laughs> rack on here, so okay. that, and I had in you know a standard eight by eight platform. When I upgraded to this bigger rack, I had to add yeah. a little extra more on onto the front so I could actually have space to deadlift out here. Yeah, yeah. So it, it works out well, I like having this, this giant platform to work off of. Yeah. So then from here, this is one of your first projects. Mm -hmm. Any future plans, like improvements to the gym, anything like that that you're looking to do? Uh, I've just been, I, maybe like three, four years ago, like I got to like this base level of having all this equipment and the last couple of years have just been instead of adding pieces, it's been upgrading and selling. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so I had, you know, an old rep fitness bench that was one of their original adjustable kinds and then sold that and I got the flat and the incline. You know, it's same, I did the same thing with some of my barbells, added a few more York weights when I, you know, yeah. started deadlifting more. So <laughs> of course I need more plates. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, so I, I don't really have any big plans to add anything. It's Well, I hope everything goes well uh -huh. at the Massonomics competition, Thank you. Yeah. the Lift Hard, Live Easy competition. Yeah. Thanks for having me over. Thanks for putting one on the old vice. Ah, <laughs> that's the saying right there. <laughs>